So, I saw something new recently. Today, we're going to talk about it. AO has created a new design, a new frame, not something that's from their archives, but something new altogether. And it's not the simple metal frame we saw before. I think you guys are going to like this one. If you've already clicked the thumbnail, you've already seen it, so I don't have to hide much. But this little beauty here is going to be making some waves. Really impressive design. So, yeah, this guy, I was impressed when I saw it initially. Very modern design, very clean lines, super cool look, and especially in this colorway, screams futuristic. I love modern, edgy, clean designs. This is all of that, and I really, really hope we see more and more of this from AO going forward. The displaced bridge, the nose pad design, it's all very modern. It's fairly edgy of a look, and it just fits and feels good. The overall weight's extremely lightweight. I will say there's a few design points, and we'll get around to this, that I'm not a huge fan of. I'm curious to see if they'll rectify this in future ones. But overall, there's not much bad to say. There's a lot of moving parts here, so as I mentioned, there are some things we'll get into that I'm not a fan of. The classic green lens in a crystal clear frame with the stainless aluminum, stainless or aluminum, I don't know, it's not specified in any of the materials I've seen yet, but this is very, very new. I, they, they don't even have it on their website yet. I have it on my website. Mm -hmm. Yep. But this is the Oxford. It is an Oxford. I would say it pairs very nicely with Classic look with a very modern edgy twist. It's that signature round lens from decades past. Now I have not measured edge to edge in all four corners to see if this is exactly a perfect circle or is more panto style with a little bit more depth to it. Overall, fits really, really good on the face. The comfort here is super high. It's not fitted for me. I haven't adjusted this at all. It's been loose, obviously, because I haven't fitted it but the style, tons and tons of style points for this frame, seriously. The really nice finish on the aluminum, or still, again, I don't know. It has a nice aluminum look to it, regardless. Super lightweight, super clean, super good feel on the face. I did actually weigh this one. We were right around 20 grams from memory. Not super heavy, not unbelievably light, but the way it balances and fits, it's just there, I don't really feel it. Now, with it being the AO, it is a little disappointing that it's not a glass lens. I've talked about this, you guys may know this guy, the Shade Review guy. Yeah, we're both very disappointed that these are not glass lenses, but I will say, and I mentioned this there as well, with a glass lens on a frame like this, there's not much weight from here back. And you'll notice even here, the balance on it is very, <laughs> very forward even though it fell backwards because yeah there we go see i'm very much having to hold that up until we get to all the way up there so most of the weight is towards the front on these already if you throw a glass lens in there you're going to put six more grams on it you're going to be edging closer to 30 grams which is still not heavy but when all of that weight is right here you are never going to get these where they belong but maybe this is the look you want in these because why not Super villain vibes for days there, guys. Now, I gotta say, and this is what caught my eye. I really, really, really like this bridge design. It's a lot of detail. It feels good on the face. They've got this nicely contoured where the pad area would normally be. And there's something about this that has some give to it here from the flex in the bridge and the way this not, the material is actually cut out it just feels good on. There's not a lot of frames and there's, hell, I don't think there's any at this price point that you just put on and it just feels great out of the box. I mean, really, this is incredible. They're pricing these, I wanna say we're 250, so right around 249 on the retail end of things. <sighs> yeah, there's nothing like this out there at that price point. I can tell you that, especially from what they charge us for them. <laughs> 
Now, one thing I wanna mention here, you know I'm a sucker for a good hinge design. The Saratogas already have a five, seven, seven barrel hinge, really thick fat leaves on that seven barrel hinge. So it's not like they just squeezed it just to say, oh, we got a seven barrel hinge. <laughs> so spring hinge, yes, flexy, givey, springy, whatever. Some people love them, some people hate them. Right off, this is one of the things I like and hate about this frame. It is a very high quality spring hinge. We actually have a true five barrel spring hinge. It's unusual to see these again at this price point. Uh, competitors that have this, you're looking for $500 sunglasses. Porsche Design is one that uses a five barrel spring hinge. But right off, the way the hinge is seated is not the same on both sides. This is not actually a problem with the spring hinge on this, saying this one's tight and this one's loose, but it is where it's actually seated into the frame. I don't know if that's something that's gonna be straightened out later, if this is specific to this model. Obviously, I've only held the one, so I can't comment on overall production, but something is off on this side. And to me, it's where this is placed, actually creating too much tension too soon here so that can't spring all the way out like we get over here. Still good, still an incredible hinge. They get that sorted out. And the reason I'm saying it is a placement thing, there is some difference. You're rubbing edge to edge, you can feel the placement of that is not landing in the same place. As far as the design there, it is actually cut and milled on a separate level. I don't know if you can really make it out on here. So they have gone through a lot of trouble to make sure this seats properly. So it does spring and action pretty easily. And this is one thing I always love on a good spring hinge when it actually pulls itself. Yeah, see, this one's not cooperating. When it pulls itself open, you know you've got a really nice spring to it. I mentioned there were a couple of things I didn't like on this design. That was one of them. The other is this beautiful bar in the middle. I love it but I hate it equally as much. From a design, from a function standpoint, mm. from a cosmetic standpoint, whew, spicy, love it. But it's mounted with four tiny screws, which upon arrival of this one were already loose, so I can tell you exactly how that's gonna work nonstop. I've seen it every frame ever that has used a bridge like this in combination without some sort of support of the acetate all the way throughout you get a lot of stress and a lot of wiggle and a lot of heat and expansion and cool and shrinkage, and those screws will loosen up nonstop. Again, it arrived with them loose. I've already tightened them. Now everything's great. So that's one thing I don't like on that bridge. The other thing I don't like on that bridge is, so right here, sitting nice and level, just the tiniest little, and you can see we're already way off from level. That tweak, that quick. I mean, now right back. That's, yeah. Sunglasses tend to get thrown around and beat up and put in cases that they don't belong in. And I can tell you nine out of 10 times when you grab this one, unless you're super careful, it is gonna be crossed up here in some way. And I mean, look how much give there is there and just that little, I am not putting much pressure on it and it is unlevel again. So there you go. Yeah, we're already unlevel again, that quick. I assure you, I am not putting much pressure, nowhere near what I would normally put on pressure to adjust a pair of sunglasses. Ah, it's unfortunate, very unfortunate. Let's get these guys back where they belong now. There we go. Sorry, don't mind me just being me. Now, yeah. Incredibly cool design. Highly recommend picking one of these up. Even with my cons, just because of the price point and the style factor on this one, it definitely belongs in a collection. Yeah, definitely. Now, obviously I am biased and I'm gonna pick up these little things all day long, especially with what I am used to, because most of the things I deal with are 600 and above. So 
I can nitpick these $200 ones all day long. It's so all I've got on these. I still, even with a few flaws, even with a few flaws for a new design, really, really good. I, you know, if this were a prototype, I wouldn't say anything about it. But this was debuted two weeks ago at a Vision Expo, ordered it when I got home, and it showed up. So I assume this is standard production. Now keep an eye out because June, end of May, early June, I'm told, we should be seeing the Sermont, which is that classic brow bar design making a resurgence. We've seen the prototypes of that. I have not held one of those yet. You'll know when I do. Catch you guys next time.